Hey, welcome back to the channel, everybody. My name is Justin, and today we're digging into Phil Towns' portfolio, his Rule 1 fund, as of Q2 2024. Now, this video is not going to go into his option contracts for the quarter. It's strictly going to be looking at his portfolio because there's a lot to get to, frankly, in this video because he bought two brand new positions in the quarter. He sold entirely out of one of them, and he reduced one of his positions down by 97%. Not only that, but a birdie told me today that he might be getting out of his one of his top three positions because he's not happy with the CEO currently. So we're going to get into all of that in this video. Hopefully, this brings you value, and let's just jump right into the portfolio right now. Okay, so on your screen now, you can see his portfolio. Now, I am using a free website called valuesider.com. Uh, this is a great website to go to. It has Phil Town's portfolio on it. It has a lot of other investing gurus as well. So really more in the value investing space. There's another uh, website I go to quite frequently called dataroma.com. That's also a great one, but it does not hold Phil Town's portfolio on it, but Value Cider does. So uh, let's just start on the bottom of his portfolio and kind of work ourselves up. Now, one stock you do not see in his portfolio that we saw last quarter was Capri Holdings. And that is a, a company that he was really in and out of pretty quickly. Now, if I remember correctly, uh, Capri Holdings is a, a, a company that owns a lot of different brands, including Michael Kors. And I believe the company was going through a, a situation where they might get bought out or merged or acquired, and their stock had, had really dropped. And I think there was a huge catalyst if they were going to merge or get acquired, that they could have a huge bump up from the stock that did not happen. And so I'm assuming that's why Phil Town got out of it in, in general, but uh, he doesn't hold that one anymore. Now, the very bottom one on here is Tyson Foods. It's only 0.09% of his portfolio, and this is the one that he's reduced about 95%. I think I may have said 97% at the beginning of this video, but it's more like 95%. Uh, so he's got quite a bit out of this stock, and we kind of knew that because he'd been selling a lot of calls at a lower strike price than what the stock was, so he obviously was trying to get out of the stock. Now, there's somebody in his investing course that did let me know the reason why he was getting out of the stock is that he was really concerned about the, the labor market in general, and he really felt that the, the margins would not come back as quickly as what he had hoped. Their margins had fallen quite a bit, and he just didn't think the, the rebound was going to be as quick as what he originally thought it was going to be, so he was getting out. Now, for me personally, I've actually been getting out of the stock for different reasons. Uh, so the CFO uh, is a part of the Tyson family. If you don't know much about Tyson Foods, interesting about them, over 90% of the voting rights are owned by the Tyson family, uh, which is good and bad, obviously, but they've had the Tyson family really running the company for a very long time. The guy earmarked to run the company is the current CFO, the youngest CFO in the Fortune 500 list. He's been arrested a couple times in the last 12 to 15 months, and most recently for a DUI. And, and so for me personally, if I'm going to put my money into this company and I see that the CFO, who's going to be the CEO, uh, can't really handle his personal life very well, uh, can I trust him with my money? And, and for me, the answer is no. But um, everybody has their own reasons of getting in an ASDOC or even not buying it, but th those are mine. So uh, next one is PayPal Holdings, tier symbol PYPL. This is a brand new position. Uh, we kind of knew that he was looking at this one. He'd been selling puts on it. So it's not surprising that tier, very small position, uh, barely, not even 1% actually in his portfolio as of the end of the quarter. Uh, would not surprise me that uh, this will continue to grow because uh, the strike prices that I saw, his puts were well below $60, and right now it's trading at $67. You know, this is a stock that really has looked cheap for a very long time. I mean, a lot of analysts believe that the stock was going to grow 15 to 17 per, or excuse me, the earnings were going to grow 15 to 17% per year. And when I looked at the stock, when it was around $57 or something like that, the forward P on it was a 14. So just from that aspect alone, it did look very, very cheap. Uh, but it wouldn't surprise me if this position grows in his portfolio if he gets put those positions that, that were out there from uh, the first quarter that, that kind of bled into the second quarter and even into the third quarter. Uh, next one that's brand new in his portfolio is Ulta Beauty, ticker symbol ULTA. 
so he's he loves Ulta. He's been in and out, out of Ulta many times. Uh, this is just a company he he loves in general. And be frankly, I mean, this uh, this is a great company. I mean, uh, brick and mortar stores have really really struggled. Uh, really since the pandemic, in, in my opinion, uh, you know, a lot of stuff has gone o- online. There's been a lot of e-commerce. Uh, Ulta Beauty obviously sells a lot of beauty products, I think over 25,000. Uh, but they still have a lot of good things going for them. They've partnered with Target and they're in the Target stores and they have a good footprint in there. You know, it's, it's a company that really prides themselves on, on service. And I would not be surprised if the position grows for him. Uh, interestingly enough, Berkshire Hathaway, Warren Buffett's company, bought into Ulta this past week, and the stock uh, really took off. I mean, it was up, I think, almost 15% in, in a couple of days. But Ulta is just an amazing company. See a brick-and-mortar store having operating margins almost 15%. Pretty impressive uh, overall. Now, next one up is a stock he actually added quite a bit to. This is the Van Eck Gold Miners ETF. It's about 4% of his portfolio. Uh, you know, it, it, it's like I said, it, it's gone up quite a bit. And this is just another indication for me that he still is, is bearish on the market. He's been bearish for quite a while, uh, in my opinion. Uh, he's been hedging against the market, whether he's been getting into gold miners or into silver. And so he's continuing to do that now. He's been doing a lot of what he considers like rocket trades where he kind of gets, uh, he sells uh, puts and then he, he gets put the stock and he sells the calls and tries to do these these quick income uh, generation type type trades. Uh, could be doing that here. I'm not really sure, but uh, that one did go up quite a bit in his portfolio. Uh, next one up is Sturm, Ruger & Company. It's almost 5% of his portfolio. This is a, a gun manufacturer, an arms manufacturer stock. He's been in and out of uh, quite a bit. Uh, it went up about 1%, so not, not much um, in, in the quarter. And right now it's trading on 41 I mean, he had held it all the way up to, I think, almost $70 or $80. So um, he's, again, been in and out of the stock. Sold when it went high. He's been buying more when it's gone lower. Uh, next one up is Howard Hughes Holdings, tier symbol HHH. So I think this is a, a stock you really got into because of Bill Ackman. Bill Ackman owns about 40% of the company. And uh, it, it's it, it's an interesting company. They're in the, the, the real real estate space. So they're a, a REIT. And it's a company that has four different segments, business segments within the company. And Seaport, uh, which is the one business within their unit, is just bleeding money like crazy. Uh, and they actually just spun that company off here in the last month. And interestingly enough, the stock went down and then actually has um, recovered quite a bit uh, on that aspect. And so uh, no change in his portfolio at all in the last quarter. Uh, and that one, next one up is Alphabet Stock, or also known as Google, uh, G-O-O-G-L. Uh, it's about 6% of his portfolio. Absolutely no change there. Uh, in general, the, there's some news recently that just came out that, again, the government wants to break them up. I kind of laugh when you know they allow Microsoft to buy Activision Blizzard at $70 billion, and they say that's okay, that Microsoft's not creating a monopoly uh, in different spaces, including the gaming space. Uh, and I understand there's other people or other players in that space, but they're uh, they own, uh, you know, Xbox and other stuff. So uh, I think that's just kind of funny where they want to talk about breaking up Alphabet and then they just allow Microsoft to buy Activision Blizzard. But it is what it is. Uh, government's always going to do their thing, I guess. Uh, next one up is Sprouts Farmers Market, ticker symbol SFM. It's about a 7% reduction in the quarter. He'd been selling some calls on this uh, stock. He's owned the stock for, for quite a while. Great little company. Uh, this is... Uh, 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 when they say farmer's market, it's really a store. It's kind of a, a small grocery store. You know, they kind of pride themselves on on produce in, in the stores. In fact, here in Colorado, we have a bunch of them across the state. We even have one near my house that we shop a lot. Uh, they have really unique relationships with farmers, even within the state, uh, where they can get really good, fresh produce and they run really good deals. I mean, they used to have flyers all the time that go out. They don't do that anymore. But when you go in there, you can find some really good deals. In fact, they always had really good $5 sushi <laughs> rolls uh, on, on Wednesdays uh, that my family took advantage a lot of. But great, great little company. There's uh, the CEO that, that runs the companies from Walmart. And he is just, 
transform this company completely. You know, when Phil Town was buying into it, it was in the low 20s. Right now it's at $83, getting close to, or excuse me, it was $83 end of the quarter. Now it's almost $100. So he has almost 5 x his money uh, during the time, which is uh, fantastic uh, overall. Now, I know we had some calls out there bleeding into the third quarter, so there's a good chance more got called away from him, uh, but we'll kind of have to wait for that. Uh, next one up is Occidental Petroleum, ticker symbol OXY. Uh, this is a, an oil and gas operator, massive, massive company, uh, up about 53%. Uh, as far as uh, the stock shares in the portfolio. So he's increased his shares by about 50%. Interestingly enough, you know, it's not just him that's bullish about it. Obviously, uh, Berkshire Hathaway's been buying shares like crazy. I think it's like a top five position in their portfolio now. And and it's very few companies that Berkshire can buy like crazy uh, because uh, how big their portfolio is in, in general. Uh, but they've been adding quite heavily. Li Lu just bought into Occidental Petroleum, Moj Pabrai, uh, and his wagon fund bought a bunch of Occidental even last, I think it might have been the first quarter. I don't know if he bought it in the second quarter or not. So uh, there's other value investors that have been loading up on Occidental Petroleum. Now, they do offer kind of a low-cost provider in the Permian space, and I think that's kind of what gives them their, their advantage or their, their moat in general. Uh, but definitely one to keep an eye on. Uh, next one, next one up is Bank OZK. To your symbol OZK, no change in the quarter. It's almost ten percent of his portfolio. Uh, you know, it's this is the one uh, I kind of uh, kind of played around at the beginning of the video, saying that someone gave me some information on where uh, Phil Town isn't really happy with the CEO, and that is Bank OZK. Uh, so it wouldn't surprise me if he starts uh, selling some shares. Uh, and reducing his position, maybe even get out of his position entirely. Uh, overall, he does have his own podcast, and apparently in that podcast, he kind of talked about his kind of dislike about uh, what he kind of saw uh, from the last earnings call uh, from the CEO in general. But this is a small bank. It's a regional bank. It's been very well operated for decades. The guy who owns it, who runs the company, runs the banks, I mean, he's been in charge since I think the late 70s. Phil Town has loved this company, loved the founder, so it's surprising to see uh, his kind of story changing there overall on the company and the founder in, in general. Uh, second large position in his portfolio is Netflix, uh, and that's ticker symbol NFLX. Technically, it's his largest uh, equity position, <laughs> uh, but on this list here, it's the second biggest. It's, it's about 24% of his portfolio. Now, it's down about 8%. percent he have been selling some calls. I think around six hundred dollars. The stock is around six uh, seventy-five here today. Uh, you know, this is a stock again, very similar to Howard uh, Hughes. He followed Bill Ackman into Netflix, and then Bill Ackman got out. Interestingly enough, um, and the stock tanked, and then it's just uh, shot back up. And uh, I know Phil Town still likes this company a lot. Uh, he's talked about in his podcast, uh, even the last couple of months, uh, that he really believes it's still uh, under its intrinsic value and still going to grow, uh, and he's going to be holding it. So I, I don't know what his intrinsic value is. It'd be interesting to know that. Uh, but seeing at 24% is, is pretty impressive. My guess he's up, you know, two to two and a half times at, at this point from his original cost basis. And he's been generating a lot of income, selling puts, selling calls over time as well, too. So there's that one. And then the largest one in his position, or his portfolio, that is, is, is his stock, or not stock, his, his cash position. It's that FH government obligation. That's his cash position. And it's 28%, so about 30% is portfolio. It's kind of been between, I would say, 25 and 40%. Uh, over the last uh, you know couple of years, really since he's founded the the portfolio in general, and I think that's just more indicative of him being bearish on the market, feeling like it's overvalued, and that sometime it's going to take a fall, and so he can take advantage of those opportunities. Now, keep in mind though, even though it's cash, I mean he's using a lot of that cash for uh, you know naked puts and doing other option trading. So it's not just sitting there doing nothing. Not only that, but he he you know, garner some decent interest on it too as well. I mean, with interest rates being up, that's one positive thing is that uh, if you're in a good brokerage account, they can, um, you can earn some good interest as well. So even if he's not trading, he's making some good interest there overall, but still pretty large part of his portfolio in, in general. So that's all his positions in, in the quarter. 
I'll do another video at some point talking about his option contracts as well. But I thought it was really interesting. You know, the Capri holding selling out of completely uh, Tyson Foods reducing, you know, 95% uh, in the quarter overall. Uh, and he'd been reducing more uh, prior to that too. So I should mention that. So that's Phil Towns portfolio in a nutshell as of the end of Q2 2024. Again, he sold out of Capri Holdings. He added PayPal. He added Ulta. Reduces Tyson Foods uh, quite a bit in the quarter. He also added quite a bit to his Occidental Petroleum position as well. But uh, love to hear from you guys. I mean, do you own any of these stock positions? Uh, what do you think about him reducing those positions, adding Ulta and PayPal as well? Now, if you're watching this video and you're wondering to yourself, you know, how does Phil Town? How do other investors value stocks? How do they know what a fair value for a stock is? Now, I do offer different valuation templates on my Patreon. You also get access to my Discord channel with about 100 other value investors on there as well. So if you're interested in something like that, I will put a link down below to my Patreon. I'd love to see you over there if that's something that you're interested in. Thank you for watching, guys. I really, really appreciate it. Love the support on here. I'll catch you guys on the other side. Take care and God bless.